Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond NSU. I'm your host, Chloe Ryan, and today I have the pleasure of being here with NSU double graduate, Kurt Hogan. Kurt graduated with his bachelor's in mass communications in 1998 and received his master's in media management in 2006. Kurt recently opened a new restaurant in the city of Hampton called George. How are you doing, Kurt? I'm good. I know you're gonna ask me, why is it called George, right? Well, yeah, we can start <laughs> off. Why is the restaurant called George? Um, some partners and I decided to open a spot a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, during the first part of COVID, when um, before there was a vaccine, one of our partners named George Garrison III passed away. Mm -hmm. So in his honor, the rest of the partners and I decided to name it after him in his honor. So mm -hmm. that's why it's called George. And it's in Hampton and it's great. We've got an amazing chef from D.C. He's doing working miracles in the kitchen that would blow your mind. It's also a jazz club, but we haven't started doing music yet. We've only been open three weeks. So um, you were going to start doing jazz in a couple of weeks. And then we have a cigar part, cigar lounge, that's Ooh. also going to open later on the summer. So okay. it's on the corner of Mercury and King Street in Hampton. It's called George. You go to georgeofhampton.com to check it out. Check out the menu, check out the venue, and see what's up. I'm excited. Yeah, we're very yeah, excited. Tell us a little it. bit about the cuisine. What's your favorite thing on the menu? The rasta pasta is killing. Mm, what's but he in does. The rasta pasta, though? Uh, I can't. The chef won't tell anybody. It's um, it's proprietary. So is it seafood rasta pasta? Is it? Well, you can have it with sh with shrimp or with chicken. Ooh. So and they're both delicious. Rasta so pasta? yeah, the shrimp and grits is off the chain. He does a blackened ta a blackened catfish taco with lime citrus coleslaw. Mm. which will knock your socks off. A bunch of stuff. Everything on the menu is delicious. Georgeofhampton.com. Check it out. Anyway, nice to see you, Chloe. Nice to see you, Kurt. <laughs> I that I got that plug in. Okay, we could definitely get back. I want to get back how, to how you opened the restaurant and stuff and how that came to be, but I want to talk about why you chose NSU. We had talked a little earlier, and you are from Boston. I'm you from Boston. Um, actually, I started school at Boston University. And dropped oh. out because my goal at the time was to be an actor. I was acting in Boston. I was doing commercials and things. And I really oh. wanted to do um, more national stuff. So I moved to New York, okay. left school. <clears throat> Worked in New York um, as an actor doing, I did soaps, I did commercials, I did off, off Broadway. Okay. And um, after 10 years and a quickie marriage, I got divorced and decided to reevaluate my life and decided, let me go back to school and... Okay. Kind of start a quickie again. Marriage will do that for you. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, it did it. So, so I came to Norfolk State because at the time, my parents had moved from uh, from Boston down here. We're both teaching in Norfolk State, mm -hmm. so it kind of made sense tuition wise to, to take advantage of their benefits. And okay. so I came down here, finished finished undergrad. Um, one of my dreams at the time was to pledge cap Alpha Psi which I did here at Norfolk State. Oh, shout I out, could tell. Shout out to the noops. <laughs> <laughs> Epsilon Zeta, yo-yo, um, I'm gonna get that into. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, um, so I did that, came down, um, finished school, I studied journalism here. The department didn't look quite as, uh, as fancy as this does. This is great, you guys must we be upgraded. loving life. Yeah, this yeah. is great. This is we're living lavish for sure. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> but I was able to put a tape together. I interned at um, all this, both of the state, well, two of the stations here at the time. Okay. I was at uh, Wavy, and I was also at uh, WVEC, okay. working as a production assistant. So I was able to get a really good tape together. That's so, awesome. um, which I suggest any students here at Norf at Norfolk State do mm -hmm. get a tape together. Start the minute you get at the department, start working on it. Mm -hmm. So by the time you graduate, you're not scrambling to try to put something together. You've already got a sense of what you want to do. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was able to. Uh, I landed a gig um, as a reporter at WBOC in um, Salisbury, Maryland, oh, wow. the CBS affiliate there. Okay. Um, I left there to go to the NBC owned station in Birmingham, Alabama. Wow. Worked there, 9-11 happened while I was there. It was funny, we were all in the newsroom that morning trying to figure out what we were gonna do in our morning meeting. Yeah. Watching the TVs and we see this plane hit the World Trade Center. It's like, oh, I guess that's what we're doing today. Yeah. And we wound up doing it for about six months. Um, <laughs> it was crazy though, but trying, you know, trying to get to New York, there, everything was shut down, there was no, no flight, so you had to drive. It was yeah. just pandemonium, but it was exciting. Um, <clears throat> after there, I um, got hired at the the CW station, which is now the Fox station in Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh wow! 
Oh, okay. And I was um, reporting there. Then I got hired at the NBC station in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. And I was um, working as a reporter and morning anchor. And um, then I decided to take a break from the business. Do you, do you care about all this? Do you want to hear this? I care okay. about all of it. <laughs> okay. You are living my dream. You lived my dream. Okay. So I want to hear all of it. So then I moved to Miami just to regroup and figure out what I wanted to do with my life because I was kind of burned out by news at that time. Uh -huh. <clears throat> After 9-11, the business really changed. Before 9-11, we were, we were doing a lot of features. It was fun it was yeah. light and a lot in a lot of instances yeah but then things got really heavy after 9 11 for obvious reasons in the news Ob business obviously so um i just thought i needed a break do stories like 9 11 take a toll on your mental like covering stories that are just so distraught and yeah really hurt. it can be i mean we saw some footage that the public never saw you know people oh. jumping from the towers hitting the ground and all that yeah. which obviously didn't air but we mm -hmm. saw it and that was that was a you know spending having spent time in New York and <clears throat> I actually worked in one of the towers at the restaurant called Windows of the World while I was a, uh, st a struggling actor, oh, wow. which was on the very top of uh, Tower Two. So when that came down, it was just really heartbreaking. Definitely, I lost some friends too, but that's an, uh, another thing. But and yeah. how do you how do you remain objective in your stories? Out of all of the places you've reported and stuff, how do you find that groove to make sure that you remain objective um, in your stories. Not you're kind of so trained to do it. Yeah. You know, you're but stories like 9/11 are just like, yeah, mind-boggling. So I can't imagine covering something like that. Well, if you're hired to do it, you'll do it. You'll figure it out. Um, what is your advice to upcoming reporters on remaining objective? You said you were trained. I mean, and I've been trained to to a certain extent. You so. just kind of know what the job is. You know what it entails. You know that you have to you know, report both sides of everything that you cover. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just do your best. I mean, it's, it's hard not to be, to be personally involved in stories, of Absolutely. course. But, uh, but I think that's expected. I mean, we're human. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've covered some stories that were really tragic that, you know, I was kind of knocked out for a couple of days. Okay. I, th I think back to a story where this guy killed his family and it turned out that one of his children was trying to hide from him in a dresser drawer, and obviously he found the child and killed him in the drawer. Wow. So, you know, things like that are just pretty... I also covered the story about the, um, the four little girls that were killed in the, the bombing in Atlanta in the 60s. The, um, the Klansmen that did it back in the 60s were finally mm -hmm. brought to justice while I was living in Birmingham, so wow. that was a great story to cover. Absolutely. Their murder trial, and they both um, were... Blanton and Cherry were their names, were both convicted of murder. Okay. So yeah, that was satisfying. Kind of got a taste of the Justice. 60s. Yeah. You know, but yeah. <laughs> out of so. all of the places you've lived, I was trying to keep track. Out of all the places you've lived and reported at, um, where w where would you say is your favorite? Um, they're all, they all have their pros and cons. Mm -hmm. I can't say that one is my favorite necessarily. Um, like, I mean, Norfolk was nice. I was Norfolk? at WTKR. That was. What about Miami? Well, I wasn't a reporter in Miami, but I like I like living, living in, in Miami. Miami. Oh yeah, I okay. mean, I lived on the beach. It was great. Yeah. I tell the story about women doing topless yoga outside my terrace, but I'm probably not here on, t on the show. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, Miami Beach was all that. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, so anyway, when I was um, it was in where was I? I moved to. Jackson, Mississippi, to start a business with a friend after living in Miami. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, at that point, I decided that I wanted to go back to school. So um, I talked to some professors here and wound up getting, um, uh, what do they call it, when they pay for you to come back to school. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, I don't know why it escapes me, old age. Um, okay. You don't um, look old. Oh, no, I'm very young. I'm very virile, too. You know, yeah. But... Um, so I came back to school and um, got my graduate degree in, um, in media management. And have you used it? Well, my goal at the time was to, to be a, a news director. Okay. And, you know, not to report so much. But it's funny because as soon as I graduated, I got a call and I was working at WTKR here in Norfolk as a reporter again. Oh. So. Full circle? 
Yeah, it was kind of like, oh no, I didn't. I, I thought I was getting away from all this, but they yeah. sucked me back in. Yeah. But the good thing was that I had an out in my contract and was able to. Oh. Am I getting the rap? Um, that I was able to go to um, to Boston to do an entertainment show for CBS, mm -hmm. a show called The Unseen, which was about um, highlighting the lives of, of black folks that are doing amazing things that you'd never heard of. So yeah. they were essentially unseen, but the problem was the show was essentially unseen oh. and we were canceled. So yeah. that was kind of a drag. So I came back down here and um, produced a show for NASA called um, Edline News. It was about all the research and development at all 10 NASA facilities around the country. Mm -hmm. So I produced that and anchored that. And then that show was actually, the budget was attached to the Obama administration. So when Obama was out of office, the mm -hmm. show ended. So I just uh, decided to stay in Hampton and do what I'm doing now. Well, you've had quite a journey for sure. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we got for today. Oh. But I want you to come back, Kurt. I need <laughs> you to come back. I want to. Can I wear my new pat when I come back? Yes, you could definitely. C and you can show your tattoo when you come back too. You know, we can get a close up on your tattoo next time. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for this episode of Beyond NSU. Thank you for watching, and I want to thank you, Kurt, for being here with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I'm your host, Chloe Ryan, and I will see you next time. And go to George in Hampton. Go to George, definitely. <laughs> George.com. Georgeofhampton.com. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. Bye.